Uh, uh, thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kyuson Lee from Seonggyunkwan University. I'm going to talk about an asynchronous IO stack, which is a low latency kernel IO stack for ultra low latency SSDs. This is a joint work with Sokashin, Won Seoksong, Taejunham, Jeyuk Lee, and my advisor, Jin Gyu Jung. Today's SSDs are really fast. Typical flash based SSDs are on order of a magnitude faster than traditional disk. And emerging ultra low latency SSDs, such as Samsung G SSD and Intel Optane SSD, are ultra fast. They can deliver a single I.O. in a few microseconds, which is several orders of magnitude faster than disk. With these ultra-low latency SSDs, the kernel I.O. stack becomes overhead in the total I.O. latency. This graph shows the breakdown of the I.O. latency using various SSDs. With slow SSDs, the kernel portion is negligible in the I.O. latency. However, with ultra-low latency SSDs, its portion is no longer negligible taking up to 37% in read and 35% in write. This leads us to optimize the kernel I.O. stack to make applications experience such super fast storage performance. In a computer system, when we need to run the two operations, and if one is computation and the other is on I.O., a typical intuitive way to accomplish these operations is to run both synchronously. However, if the two operations have some independent parts, we, then we can, run, we can apply the asynchronous I.O. technique. For example, after performing dependent parts in computation, we can run the I.O. and independent parts in computation at the same time. By doing so, we can utilize both I.O. device and CPU. Consequently, we can improve the throughput of a system and also reduce the total latency to complete these operations. Our idea is to apply this asynchronous I.O. concept to the I.O. stack itself to reduce I.O. latency and improve the storage access performance. Before we get into the details, let me briefly overview our approaches. First in the read path. The original read path runs many I.O. stack operations synchronously to the actual I.O. operation. In our scheme, we run some of the I.O. stack operations asynchronously to the I.O. so we can reduce the reduce latency of the read system call. In the write path, a buffered write has no chance to overlap computation with I.O. because all operations are done in memory. So we focused on the F-Sync system call because it is a latency critical operation and it actually generates the I.O. operations. In the original F-Sync path, on a journaling file system such as ext4, a single F-Sync system call causes three write I.O.s. Our scheme our scheme is to overlap I.O. stack operations with previous I.O. operations, so we can reduce the latency of the F-Sync system call. In the rest of the talk, I'm going to present the detailed analysis of the I.O. path behaviors in the Linux kernel. Each analysis is followed by our approach to applying asynchronous I.O. concept to each I.O. path. And I'll also talk about a lightweight block I.O. layer, which provides low latency block I.O. services to the kernel. Then I'll show you the evaluation results of our scheme. I'll show you the vanilla read path first. This analysis is an average of four kilobyte read on Optane SSD. When a read system call is called, the page cache layer first handles the read request. It searches for the request page in the page cache. If page is missing, it allocates a new page and requests read I.O. to the file system layer. In the file system layer, it inserts the allocated page into the page cache and locates the logical block address of the request file page. For the next step, it generates block I.O. requests and submits it to the block layer. The block layer transfers block I.O. requests to the device driver layer, which allocates DMA address of the buffer page and submits an I.O. command, an NVMe command here. The thread is context switched, and when the device I.O. is finished, the interrupt handler deallocates DMA address and handles compilation functions for the request. Finally, the thread is woken up, and request data is memory copied into the user space. Our first focus is page allocation and DMA address allocation, or DMA mapping. To take off these operations from the critical path, we maintain a pool of free pages, 
in which DMA address is assigned in advance. The pool is a simple linked list, linked list of four kilobyte free pages for each core. This is to simplify the operations to put and get pages from the free page pool, so we insert a page pool or location into the critical path. In doing so, when the read system call is called, we use the page from the free page pool during the critical path. After IO submission command, we run the two operations asynchronously to the IO to refill the page. Our next focus is page cache insertion operation. In the Linux kernel, when a page is missing in the page cache, a new page is allocated and indexed in the page cache. Then, IO request is issued. This is to prevent other threads from uh, issuing, the, issuing duplicated IO requests to the same file index. Hence, this sequence has a trade-off between overheads of page cache operations and preventing from duplicated IO requests. Since our goal is to reduce the la IO stack latency, so we move this operation to after submitting an IO command. One problem of this approach is that if two or more threads miss the same file page, duplicated IO requests can happen. To synchronize this situation in page cache, only one thread can succeed to insert the page. Insert the, page. the other pages that failed to insert are freed. Throughout our evaluation, we found that the frequency of duplicated IO requests is extremely low in practice. The last target in the read path is DMA unmapping operation, which is performed in interrupt handler after a device IO is finished. In our scheme, we delay the DMA unmapping operation to when a system is idle or waiting for another IO request. This is an extended version of the deferred protection scheme in Linux, which delays the unmapping of the DMA addresses to avoid the overhead of IO MMU operations. Because this is related to security of a system, we offer the option to disable this feature. The remaining long latency overheads in the read path are the operations in the block layer and the device driver layer. To reduce the latency overheads of the current block IO layer in the Linux kernel, we proposed a lightweight block IO layer, which is specialized to NVMe SSDs. The Linux kernel uses multi-queue block layer for NVMe SSDs to scale with multi-core CPUs and multi-queue SSDs. However, the current multi-queue block layer has many operations that hinder low latency block IO services to the kernel. It uses two structures, BIO and request, to represent a single block IO request. When function submit BIO is called, a BIO object is converted to the request object. During the conversion, Many time-consuming operations are performed, such as IO merging and command tag allocation. After the request object is made, it passes through the scheduling layer, software, and hardware context in the block layer. Finally, the device driver layer requires many auxiliary data structures to submit an IO command. Many previous works suggested that these operations are obstacles to low latency block IO services. First, the IO merging operation is inefficient in fast storage devices. Many studies mentioned the inefficiency of IO scheduling for low latency SSDs. And several papers suggested replacing the software side IO scheduling to device side IO scheduling. In addition, Dynamic memory allocations take tens to hundreds of CPU cycles, which prolongs the IO latency. To minimize these, these latency overheads, we implemented a lightweight block IO layer, which replaces the current multi-key block layer and provides low latency block IO services. It uses only a single object called LBIO to represent the block IO request. LBIO has only essential arguments for to make NVMe IO requests, including the DME address. So it can eliminate unnecessary structure convergence and allocations. Also, we maintain per CPU LBIO pool to support longness object allocation, and it also simplifies command taking operation. Through the lightweight block layer, the device driver layer requires only a single dynamic memory allocation, which is a physical region page list for the NVMe protocol. 
So this figure is the read path timeline before applying lightweight block layer. And by using lightweight block layer, we can further, the reduce, we can further reduce the latency. Finally, compared to original read path, you can notice that our scheme reduced the length of the critical path in the read path a lot. Now let's talk about the write path. As mentioned in the write path overview, we focused on the app sync system call with EXT for journaling file system. In these systems, when an app sync system call is called, an application thread writes back three data blocks to storage and waits for the completion of the IOs. Then it wakes up the journaling thread or JBD2. In the journaling thread, it first prepares journal blocks, which are usually file system metadata blocks. Then it issues the journal block IO and waits for the compilation of that. Finally, the journaling thread prepares the commit block and issues the IO command. A flush command is enforced between the journal block IO and the commit block IO to, enforce, to, to answer the ordering between the two writes. In our proposed F-Sync path, we also write vectory data blocks first. And you wake up the journaling thread in advance to allow the journaling thread performs its computation while the data block I.O. is ongoing. The journaling thread prepares journal blocks and issues the journal block I.O. At the moment, instead of waiting for the compilation of the journal block I.O., the journaling thread continues to prepare the commit block. Then it waits for the compilation of all previous IOs associated with this file system transaction. Then it sends a flush command to ensure the ordering constraint. Finally, it issues the commit block IO. As a result, the total latency of the F-Sync system call is reduced because the computation parts are overlapped with the IO operations. Now the evaluation. We implemented our scheme in the Linux kernel and evaluated our scheme using Samsung GSSD and Intel Optane SSD. We measured the performance using various synthetic and real-world workloads. Because of the time limit, this talk only covers the results using Optane SSD. First, in the random read performance. The figure to the left shows the random read latency with varying block sizes using a single thread. Our scheme reduced the latency by up to 23%. Uh, one thing we want to note here is that when our scheme works with polling, our scheme achieved a single digit microsecond IO latency, 7.6 microseconds in four kilobytes. This was not viable in the vanilla IO stack. The figure to the right shows four kilobyte random read throughput with varying the number of threads. We overcommitted the number of threads to the available cores to mimic high depth IO. As you can see in the figure, uh, until the device is saturated, our scheme shows higher performance than the, Linux, than the original Linux. Uh, when, the big, when the device becomes the uh, bottleneck, it shows the similar throughput. The next is random write followed by F-Sync with ext 4 ordered journaling mode. With the same experimental factors such as block sizes and the number of threads, our scheme reduced the latency by up to 26% and improved the throughput by up to 27%. However, with increasing the number of threads, overlap computation and IO naturally occurs, thereby diminishing the performance benefit of our scheme. For real-world workload evaluation, we used dbbench read random and full sync workload from RocksDB. Each experiment shows performance improvement by up to 27%, and 44% res respectively in our scheme. But similarly, with increasing the number of threads, the performance benefit of our scheme is diminishing by natural overlap computation with IO. Now let me conclude the talk. Our asynchronous IO stack enable to overlap computation with IO by applying asynchronous IO concept to the kernel IO stack itself. In addition, we proposed a lightweight block IO lightweight block IO layer specialized to low latency and VMI SSDs. Finally, we achieved high performance gain in real world workload. The source code is available at this GitHub repository. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention and I'm ready to take questions. Questions?
So your work is very good about latency, but what about throughput? I mean, on these devices, it's not so easy to get the full throughput of the device. Do you have any experience with that? Uh, yeah, we we are we are focused on the latency, so uh, we need to we need to more study with the with the with the improve the throughput as you, as you mentioned. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Hi, Sudarshan Ratkas. Can you comment on the increase in CPU utilization inside the kernel layer uh, uh, with this? The number of kernel threads, additional kernel threads that would you would require and the overall system CPU <coughs> utilization. Uh, I'm sorry, but can, can you repeat Can that? you comment on the overall CPU utilization increase in the system? And does it have any impact on the application? Uh, I'm sorry for not understanding you. Uh, so, uh, so if you're going yeah, to yeah. do a lot of asynchronous operation inside the kernel, right? I'm assuming everything is happening in the file system layer. Right? Uh, yes, yes. So, which means that you're going to increase the number of threads in the, inside the kernel. Right? You're going to use more number of CPU threads inside the kernel. Uh, I'm sorry, but can you take it offline? I'm sorry. I, I, can, maybe I'll, I can understand. May, maybe I'll just rephrase his question slightly yeah. differently in a more yeah. straightforward way. So, the operations complete faster. Yes. But you consume more CPU or less CPU than in the Venona case? Do you do more work or less work or the same amount of work but in a, diff but in a better overlap with the I.O.? I think that's your question, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I can't. I can't understand. Uh, okay. Maybe, uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll probably both take it offline then. Oh, okay. okay. Thank, thank you very you. much. We okay, should thank you. you. Oh, one more question. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Jason Hennessy from NetApp. I'm wondering if you took a look at the effects of your changes on the variability. So, like the 99th percent latency and the predictability. Um, you, you showed some really great uh, latency improvements. I'm just wondering if that, if what the cost was. So, so uh, do you have any ideas on the variability? Variability. Uh, like 95th percentile latency, 99th uh, percentile latency uh, effects. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I understand. Uh, you, mean, you mean the, the concern about the tail latency, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's, a good, that's a good question, but uh, our focus is the, is the generality of the IOS tech, so it, it is the, none of our focus. but. I think it is the good question to to improve the, our future, future work. So, okay, thank yes. you. Yes, thank you. Okay, let let's thank the speaker one more time. Thank you.